Hey everybody, Jason here. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are all having a great day. So a few things I wanted to go over just uh, in response to some questions mostly. Um, one, why do I have multiple multiple uh, strike prices on the same expiration date for my Tesla put credit spread? So there are a few reasons there. Um, one, uh, some of them got rolled out from, from a prior time. So, uh, when we were back, back months ago and Tesla was up in the seven, seven hundreds, eight hundreds, uh, things like that for a bit of time. And those put credit spreads became losers. And we haven't had to do this in a while for that particular reason, but I would roll those things out to a much later date. Um, and a lot of times even grab some credit there so an example of those could be maybe like these 660s uh 660 660 650s um and i rolled those out a long time ago and i rolled them all the way out till the end of the year these at one point were all losers and instead of taking a loss or giving up the the collateral or just letting them expire i just went ahead and rolled those things out so um I don't know. Nope. We can't see, can't see when we did that. Um, I'm sure somewhere, somewhere in history, we could figure that out. But, um, but that is one of the reasons that I ended up, um, with those. And then as I continue to roll things out, I, there's not a high probability that I'll open up the new ones exactly at that same point. So that's one of the reasons. Uh, the second, second reason is I like to have some that are very far out of the money that are kind of just a, a give me, um, even those, those will have lower premium collected instead of collecting maybe a hundred dollars on a $500 or a $5 spread, I'll collect $50 or $30. Um, but the probability is much higher that I can just roll it or let it expire worthless. And that's just kind of the free money and where I'm playing closer to the underlying current price. Um, that's going to be a higher risk or a higher risk. Yes. Um, but higher reward. So maybe I'll grab a hundred dollars premium for that same amount of collateral. And those I know going in they are they are more risky. And then there's a potential I have to do like what you saw and move them out several months in order to preserve my initial collateral uh, given. Um, and then third reason is just when I'm opening, I go to open up a new one. Um, I, I may go to that same strike date and then just depending on where where the price action is, I just want to open up a new one and perhaps the old one is either uh, or the one that's already at that strike price doesn't uh, strike date, expiration date, doesn't give me enough collateral for what I want to do. Um, so I want to collect a little bit more. So maybe I'll just open up the next one at a little bit higher strike price. So those are basically, those are the three reasons that I end up with multiple strike prices um, on the same same dates. And that's kind of why they're all over the board. Um, so hopefully that makes sense um, that I don't want to just have everything all in one position. Some some of them, when I'm, when I'm way far out of the money and I can just keep collecting that, that's kind of like a little bit of a snowball there. Um, and then the ones that are higher risk, those are definitely like more reward. And sometimes those work out and sometimes they need to be rolled. So, um, the next thing, iron, iron butterflies and broken wing butterflies, two completely different plays. Um, I have a lot of iron butterflies or not iron butterflies, broken wing butterflies on the spy. You can see I have one, two, three four here well i have a couple um couple of those and three of those those are all broken wing butterflies those are very low risk and very low reward so those are more of a uh put my money somewhere and grab about three maybe three or four percent uh premium on my collateral uh, and they also have a little built-in lottery ticket uh in them which is kind of nice where an iron butterfly, that is a very high uh, risk to reward play. So two completely different things. And we can take a look at both of those. So, and I'll go ahead and, oops, I'll go ahead and open up 
one more uh, of these broken wing butterflies. Um, you can see this one, like, for example, $300 credit, and we only grabbed 10 bucks. But the likelihood of this, this going against us is very low. So let's go ahead and open one of those up, and I will show you what I do. We're going to, I generally like to go out about 10 days on, on these particular plays. And, um, but I already have some on the 13th and 16th. So we're going to open one up on the 18th. And the first thing we're going to do is go to sell our puts. And what we're going to look for is a delta of 10 or 0.1. So we can just start kind of looking here. This is a, uh, 13, um, the 26, that's a, that's a 0.11 and or 0.103 here, so that's probably pretty close, but we'll just check this one, 0.95. So what we'll do is we'll look at these 0.24s. Um, let's see, that was a 9.5, or what's the other one? Okay, so this guy's probably the closest I'm going to find to a 10 delta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sell, and I'm going to end up selling two of these. I'm going to go to the next strike up. And I'm getting very annoyed at Robin Hood doing that every single time I switch over, the thing moves. So I'm going to buy the one above it. <clears throat> so that's our first step. And now what I need to do is figure out which additional one I can buy down below here. And the way I'm going to do that and determine which one I want to do is I'm going to take the two of these. So this is going to be, I mean, it's moving back and forth, but we'll just say, uh, two of these uh, times 0.7 for easy maths um, is going to be about a dollar forty, and then we're going to subtract out the seventy-six cents from this one that we're going to buy back, and that will give us uh, sixty-four cents. So that's what we have left. All right. So, and I'm going to just look to collect. 10 11 dollars somewhere in there 12 the bucks something like that so what i'll look for is one i can buy back for around 50 you know 54 or a little bit less cents so we'll buy um like this 53 here and now since we want to buy one of these sell two of these buy one of these we're gonna have to hit this little up arrow here go to this button here this edit ratio um, I, I probably don't need that edit ratio here and we're going to pop into this middle guy that we're selling we want to sell two of those hit delete and sell two of these and hit continue you can see um, they're saying about 12 bucks but from experience I know um, this is probably only going to grab us about 10 bucks we can try 11 <clears throat> uh, we can also hit this down arrow and take a look at the profile. So you can see what we have here. Um, this is gonna be a maximum gain of whatever credit we receive here. And the SPY can dip all the way down to 426 and to the upside and go as high as it wants, which is, uh, I think that's pretty correct since S&P generally goes up. And then as you can see, we kind of have this little built-in lottery ticket. If it happens to close exactly at 425, we can make $111 on this play. So it's switching from a credit to a debit situation. Um, but that that won't happen. <laughs> that just like will not happen very often at all. It very well could. So we will go into review and see if we can get filled at 11 bucks. Uh, my feeling is we'll have to uh, replace it for $10 to be able to get filled on this. And let's try 10 bucks to get filled. All right, we got filled there. So $10 for our $300 collateral, that's uh, like 3.3% gain maximum on that. But again, very high, very, uh, or very low risk, very low reward there. Now, we can take a look also at an iron butterfly. Now, an iron butterfly, that was, and just to review, that was a broken wing butterfly. An iron butterfly, we're going to have, 
we're gonna do start off kind of the same thing but we're doing this at the money uh, so so I'll put doesn't matter if we do the puts or the credit or the uh, calls first but we're gonna sell at the money oops we're gonna buy the one below it and these can be these can be wider but you're gonna need more collateral uh, we'll show what a two dollar wide one looks like uh, and then we'll sell the call at the same strike price we just sold the put at and then go the same width up and so now we have an iron iron butterfly so this is like i said this is a very high risk to reward um play saying see max loss of only 24 24 dollars if we did it um just a dollar wide it would probably be even less but here's the good thing about this, we can turn our $24 into um, a max profit of 176 So that would be, uh, what, a 700% gain or so. But the downside, the reason why it's very high risk, it only needs to slide below our, yeah, below 440 or above 443 And then this play is out the window, garbage, not worth anything. I'm not going to open one of these up. Um, and then just a little variant in this, just so just since we're going through these, we can also do what's called a long call uh, butterfly or a long butterfly where we would buy something that's out of the money, hoping to hit that particular price. So let's say on August 18th, we're, we're thinking the S&P is going to go up to 450. So we would buy the 449, we'd actually buy the 451, and then we would sell the 450. We're going to sell two of these guys. And uh, again, since we need to sell two of those, we're going to pop into edit ratio, and we're going to change that to two of them that we're going to sell, hit continue. And again, we can pop down, pop down here and see what this risk profile looks like. Now you can see our our cost of playing this is only three dollars, right? Three bucks, like almost nothing. But if the S and P happens to jump up to four fifty, and it has to be on expiration, um, then we have a maximum gain for our five dollars or three dollars, four dollars, five dollars, whatever that we'd end up getting filled at of ninety six dollars. So you know. A thousand percent like that would be just a ton of gain on a small amount of risk um, this would be a decent play short term if you had if you had uh, some reason for thinking we're gonna hit um, a certain number uh, and if we looked at instead of using Robin Hood to look at this profile because this is only going to show what it looks like at expiration if you looked at this uh, under like options strat or options profit calculator and you entered the same play in here what you can see is over time instead of this being just basically a high-pitched little tent here um, between now and expiration this these actually are wider so these little dots here would be pulled out here actually uh, let's grab the pen so initially um, Initially, like midway through, you're going to have a wider, uh, a wider area of profit. It's not going to be very high in the middle, um, but basically, what this does is this transforms from where it is like right now, probably like this, to kind of the second guy, and then eventually it moves up. So there is one area that is super high profit, but that's not until expiration. So. Hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, if you never have, and you're looking at all these different strategies, I would highly recommend jumping into Options Strat Calculator. You can see what the risk profile and um, that profit looks like over time. And there's actually a bar you can drag through it to see it from when you open the trade to when, uh, when expiration is. Um, you know, for three bucks, Let's open one of these and we can just see how it performs. Uh, we'll probably have to pay five, right? We'll put five dollars. YOLO, five bucks. <laughs> see if we hit some 450s. There, we got filled. All right. 
why not um but that's something i would play around with they have tons of pretty basic strategies in there and you can kind of look through them and see what the risk profile is uh, a lot of times that that chart that graph is not going to make sense right off the bat but give it some time it'll uh all of a sudden it'll mean something to you so just just like i say every once in a while all this stuff is to me is kind of like learning a foreign language you start you start grabbing the basics start being able to form some sentences and then eventually you'll be able to communicate uh so uh and in the video down about four grand today but i'm very happy with almost all my positions here and if we get uh boy where is a where is a tesla play um, I saw, and unfortunately I was in a meeting, I would have grabbed something. Um, Tesla did bounce down below 700 today. Pretty crazy. Um, but my, my big debit spread, I've been waiting for a pullback. I've been saying it for a few weeks here and then I, then I've missed the fills a few times. I'm going to grab it on my other account, a, um, a, uh, June, 2023, uh, 880, 1400 debit spread on Tesla is what I'm looking at. And that thing is going to be probably eight, $9,000. All right, guys, have a great day. Love you. Uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow during the live stream. Um, someone asked how you get notified or how you find out. I think, uh, I believe if you're subscribed and I think you have to turn notifications on, it should pop up, but I'll do it tomorrow uh, sometime between 11 a.m., 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Um, and I usually post it an hour or so beforehand. So I think you should get notified. If you show up, that'd be super cool. Um, but I'm just, <laughs> it's, it's weird. As many videos as I make, there's so many things that I don't understand how it works on the other side with some of this stuff. So hopefully some of this was helpful for you guys. Love you. And let's make a lot of money.